the Buddha said, if you want to understand something, you have to see it as separate. In other words, separate from you. And even though it's part of a causal chain, it is separate from the things that influence it and the things that it influences. You want to be able to step back from these things. It's like looking at your face. You can't see your face. All you can see are reflections. It's only people who stand outside that can see your face properly. So you want to be able to see the face of your defilements, your greed, your anger, your delusion. You need a place to step away from them. That's what the breath provides. Because one of the first things they do when they take over is that they commandeer your breath. They hijack your breath, make you breathe in ways that aggravate the situation. And then when you're feeling aggravated, you're more likely to go with them. So you've got to seize the breath back, regardless of what's going through the head. You just tell yourself, I'm going to breathe in, breathe out in a way that's really calm. That's when you have the chatter that comes up. I'm not going to pay any attention to it. I'll let it be there. If you try to chase these things away, they, they have you. So you let it be there, but you don't get involved. Now you notice in your effort not to get involved, it will have its hooks. Like magazine articles, they try to hook you with the first paragraph, assuming that you're not necessarily interested in the topic, but you could be interested. All it requires is just a little something to pull your interest in. No greed is that way. Anger is that way. They've got little somethings. They've got little hooks on them that are going to pull you in. And you want to be able to see those hooks, and you want to take the barbs off the hooks. But again, to do that, you have to be able to stand separately from them. Because sometimes the reasons you go for these things are not all that admirable. You don't like to admit them to yourself. Sometimes when there's anger, it's a way of covering up your own thoughts about maybe what you did wrong. So you can find somebody else who's done something even wronger, and you go after that. That's the hook. So give your mind a good place to stay, a good place to stand apart, so it's not overwhelmed by these things. When you've got a sense of well-being that goes with the breath, then you're also less likely to want to go in. You're standing apart with a good spot. It's like being on the side of the road and somebody drives up, and if you're standing in the sun or standing in the rain, you're pretty miserable. You'll just jump in at the slightest invitation, and you're not all too picky about who, who's driving the car or where they're going. But if you're standing in a comfortable spot, sheltered from the wind, sheltered from the sun, sheltered from the rain, people come up and they invite you and you say, well, maybe no. Where are you going? Who are you? What's really in it for me? When you have the luxury of asking those questions, then you're a lot safer. And having that safe spot is what gives you that luxury. Well, it's the same with the breath. Learn to make the breath your own, make the breath your friend, your ally, your support. So you're not so easily hooked. Because otherwise, we know what happens to a fish when they're hooked. They get pulled up. And then it's it for them. So you can see the hook, you see the bait. You say, nope, I'm not going for that. I've got a better thing, something better to eat here, some, a better place to stay. I don't need to go where that hook is going to take me. So do your best to get with the breath and to learn how to do that as quickly as you can and as consistently as you can. There'll be times when you fall off, but you can put yourself right back. And that way you can begin to straighten things out inside.